हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन दी लीनियर एल्जेब्रा टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट दी लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर गर्थ वर्किंग इन दी स्कूल ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स थाप इंस्टीट्यूट इंडिया दिस इज द लेक्चर कंटिन्यूज फ्रॉम दी वैक्टर स्पेस दैट इज द लास्ट लेक्चर वॉज ऑन दी लीनियर इंडिपेंडेंस आर देयर विच इज अवेलेबल ऑन द प्ले लिस्ट मैथमेटिक्स टू चैनल नेम डॉक्टर हरीश गर्थ सो इफ यू हैव एनी टू वैक्टर स्पेस वी एंड डब्ल्यू ओवर द फील्ड एफ दिस इज माई फील्ड and w and v are my vector spaces are there then you can say the mapping t from the one vector space to the another vector space is called as the linear transformation or it is also called as the vector space homomorphism or called as the linear mapping whenever these two properties are satisfied the first one is the additive property second is the homogeneous property that is whenever you take the any of the two elements from their domain u and v from the vector space then this property holds and whenever you take the scalar multiple of them it also holds or if if you want to combine these two property you can write as a single term of alpha u plus beta of u here this linear transformation is denoted by lt as a standard notation so the necessary and the sufficient condition for any of the linear transformation is whenever the uh, t of 0 is 0 uh, this property is satisfied and here so make sure that if any of these properties not satisfied then it is not a linear transformation make sure that u and v are from your vector space v alpha and beta that is a if there is only one alpha then its alpha belongs to the field f for example if you look about that so if uh, you have to check whether it is a linear transformation or not so here this is a r cube r square sorry so you have to take the two elements for this first transformation from the domain so i can consider the two transformation as x1 y1 and second trans uh, second vector is my x2 y2 both belongs to the my vector space r2 then you can clearly see that the first property of the 0 comma 0 it's not be a 0 it means this is not a linear transformation so you have to just simply pr provide the one counter example if it is not a linear transformation second example is here all of you know that whatever the mode of x is this mode x is a linear or non linear so it is a non linear now since it is a non linear it means it is not a linear transformation it means you have to satisfy uh, provide the one counter example you can clearly see that t of 0 comma 0 is my 0 so that first property satisfied so let's start with the x comma y so that is you have to take the two elements one is the u second the v from the domain r then you can start from the t of u plus v you can add them you have to here now this is my x this is my y you can substitute here so it's a 2x minus 3y i can write this element as of 2x minus 3y1 i can take the first pair plus 2x2 minus of 3y2 now can you say this what is the value of the mod x plus y it is always be less than equal to mod x plus mod y it can never be equality it means it is not equal to this because what is the meaning of that this is nothing but x1 y1 what is that this is nothing but x2 y2 what is that x1 comma y1 is a u that is it is not equal to so once it is a not equal to it means it is not a linear transformation look about another one is there again this is the v3 what is the meaning of the v3 is this is nothing but my r cube so again first part is that you can uh, easily verify that whether the 0 comma 0 is satisfied so you can see 0 comma 0 so it's a 0 that's the first property satisfied so we can also see that this this value and this value all are the linear so it means it may or may not be the linear transformation so i can consider the two elements from this v3 that is x1 y1 z1 and x2 r here we can start with the u plus v and alpha u if either of the property satisfied then it is a not otherwise here what is the value of the u plus v and all of you know that whatever the u plus v it is also belongs to the v3 of r now we can start from here now this is my x this is my y this is my z i can substitute here x minus y plus z this is my x this is my y this is my z and 2 of x r now can i write this as i can combine them for the first pair like of here so we can write like here this is a first pair and comma of the first pair r so what is that this is nothing but the t of u this is nothing but t of it means the first property satisfied similarly what is the alpha of u alpha of u nothing but the alpha x1 alpha y1 alpha z1 i can substitute this value again here i can again take them i can take this value as alpha common so what will happen if you take as alpha common from here 
alpha common from here what is that this is nothing but the u since both the properties satisfied so it's a linear transformation or instead of uh, two property you can start from here directly so like here if you look for the second example so our target is to show this one either you can show this property or you can show by two properties separately i can take the elements from the v of c that's a complex domain so i can take an as here then for any of the scalar from the any of the scalars are there we can start from here this is my x this is my y so what is the function is x minus iota y i can write here i can take the pair of the x1 and the iota y of this plus of the second component now what is that this is nothing but my here this is x1 plus iota y1 that is t of u so since this property is satisfied it means it is a linear transformation look at the next example are there can you say this is a linear functional so again you have to take the vector space from the v so that is a function are there so i can take the two function f and g alpha and beta are the scalar then you have to start from the here now i can substitute the value of the f instead of here i can open this bracket i can write here i can integrate this by parts now i can take alpha as a common beta is outside so what will happen this is nothing but my t of alpha t of g so it means this is nothing but my linear function look about these five examples are there firstly you have to, uh, you have to check whether any of them is a non linear say for example the first part can be a 0 comma 0 satisfied you can see it's a 0 comma 0 it means this is a satisfied and also this is a linear function x plus y is also be the linear so it means we have to check these properties are there so i can set by u and v are here then i can start with the alpha u plus beta v so once you will start from the alpha this is the x this is the y this is the z so this is z this is y and x i can substitute here z x plus y now i can take the pair of the z1 this is the x1 and this is the y1 i can write this one this is the pair of i can take the pair of this and rest are here what is that i can take alpha is a common what is that this is nothing but my this one that is x1 y1 z1 this is my nothing but u so this means this is a linear transformation look what the second one are there so if you start from here again you can see the 0 comma 0 comma 0 is 0 that's a satisfied so we can start from the here again so we can take alpha u plus beta v which is nothing but here in this case this is my x this is my y this is my z so i can substitute here x minus y and x plus z now again i can take the pair of the one that is a this is the first pair and from here this is my first i can write this elements as of here so this is this pair and this pair i can write like I can take alpha common from the first part, beta common from the second part, and this is nothing but my T of U, second is T of V. Rest part you can easily verify by yourself. Now look about that whether it's a linear or non. Look at that. If you consider this function, clearly see that it's a non-linear. So it means this is not a linear transformation. So you have to provide one counter example. Again, you can see this is a mod X. This is a non-linear, it's not a lean, it's not a linear transformation x y what is the degree of this the degree is my 2 it means this is not a linear transformation the here the degree is 1 it may or may not be and so on so let's start with the first part since it is a non-linear so it means this part is not a linear transformation so it means you have to provide the one counter example enough so let's start with the u and v and we can start with the u plus v this is my u plus v what is that this is the mode of y so this is my y now how you can expand the value of the mod x plus mod y it is always be less than of mod here but we need always an equality so it means it can never be here because of this so it can never be equality so what is that this is nothing but my t of u this is nothing but my t of v so since it is not a linear transformation look about second one again you can see what is the degree of this you can see the degree is my 2 it means it is not a linear transform clearly see that if you start from the alpha of u and if you substitute the value of here this is my x this is my y it is nothing but my alpha square what is that this is nothing but my t of u but we need is not equal to alpha it means this is not a linear transform or you can also start with the t of u plus v you can easily verify these are not equal to t of u and t of v 
look what these two examples are there clearly sees that in this case it's a 0 comma 0 is not satisfied it means this is not a linear transform you can see here is that 0 comma 0 satisfied here is the element 1 so it's a 0 comma 0 is a satisfied so it means we have to satisfy these two properties now here there is a r so it means i have to consider x and y or you can say u and v so what is the value of this is it is nothing but my 2x here now i can take the pair of the x and x y and y what is that this is t of x this is t of y so it means this satisfied look at the alpha of x here i can take alpha common what is that this is nothing but my t of x it means this is a linear transform look about these two properties again you can see this is a no linear it means this is not a linear transform again mod x is my non linear function so it means it is not a linear transform so how you can prove that you have to provide some one counter example so say alpha of u i can take this value into here x here i can take alpha common what is that this is nothing but my t of u but this is alpha square time t of u but we need always as alpha which is not equal it means this is not a linear transform this is the mode of x again it is not a linear transform you can start with the u plus v what is the mode of x plus y it is always be less than of this so it means this can never be the equality hence it is not a linear transform look at the another case are there if you consider the vector space consists of the matrix then you have to prove whether these are the linear transform or not now here you have to provide the matrix so i can consider the two matrix a and b of n cross n we have to check whether these two properties are satisfied or not let's start with the first one this is my a plus b i can substitute here and remember that p is my fixed that's why it's a constant now i can open this here i can take the pair of this what is that this is ap minus pa this is nothing but the t of a bp minus is a t of b so it means the first property is satisfied Similarly, we can start with the alpha of a here. We all know that when you scalar multiply them, it can be taken outside. So it's a a of p and here. I can take alpha as a common, we will get here. So clearly see that both the properties satisfied, it means this is a linear transform. Similarly, you can prove it by yourself is here. Look at the last example. Here, this is the polynomial, what is the p2? p2 is a polynomial of degree less than equal to 2 so it means you have to consider the a what is the a is a matrix so i can consider the two matrix a and b of these elements such that what is the value of the a plus b or you can say alpha plus b uh, here alpha and beta already there so i can consider here as a of a plus b of b so if you take on them you can see again this is a 2 cross 2 matrix so it means it belongs to the b now I can start with the here, I can start with this value and my target is to prove whether this will hold or not. So what is that A of? So I can substitute this value. So this is the alpha. You can see here, this value is my alpha according to this. So I can write the first pair alpha. What is that? This is beta plus alpha, beta plus gamma. That is this value. So it means this and here I can add these two values and so now if you open this bracket take the pair of the one and so on this is the pair of the x and so on so all these elements are with respect to the index one what is that this is nothing but my t of a sorry uh, i can take a as a common firstly what is that if you compare this this is the same thing this is the index one that is my here it means this is a linear transform so this is the way you can check whether it's a linear transformation or not provide the one counter example is enough to prove whether it's a not a linear transform we will see our next class how you can see the matrix associated with the linear transformation till then you can simply follow the playlist mathematics 2 channel name dr harishkar where you find the various videos on that or you can find this channel name dr harishkar on the youtube till then best of luck students happy learning